The root of David. He is the bright. And the morning star, the prince of peace, the alpha. And the omega. Walking in sunlight. Yeah, yeah. All of my journey. Oh, over the mountain. Oh, over the mountain. Jesus has said I Well the Lord said I'm never never leaving Oh Lord that's a promise Divine word Promise that never Never can fail Oh oh, heavenly heavenly Y'all want nothing like to do Oh heavenly son Now when his master heard The words of his wife Which she spoke to him saying This is what your slave did to me His anger burned Verse 20, Joseph's master took him and put him into the jail, the place where the king's prisoners were confined, and he was there in the jail. Verse 21, but the Lord was with Joseph, amen, and extended kindness to him and gave him favor in the sight of the chief jailer. The chief jailer committed to Joseph charge all the prisoners who were in the jail so that whatever was done there, he was responsible for it. The chief jailer did not supervise anything under Joseph's charge because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made to prosper. Genesis 40, verse 1. Then it came about after these things. The cupbearer and the baker for the king of Egypt offended their lord, the king of Egypt. Pharaoh was furious with his two officials, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker. Verse 3. So he put them in confinement. In the house of the captain of the bodyguard in the jail, the same place where Joseph was in prison. Church, one of the first examples of fake news, y'all smiled this morning, and alternative facts come from Genesis 39 when Potiphar's wife lied on Joseph. And a principle that we all need to know and understand clearly is very simple. It's simply the fact that people lie. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, people lie. And I have discovered that many people who have been lied on didn't do what somebody said that they did. Inevitably, everybody can resonate for the most part with being lied on. Am I right about it? But if I were to flip the coin, which you know I will, it would be interesting to raise the question, who have you lied on? Let me move on. I don't want to spend too much time there. Uh, Church people lie on you because you have something that they want. People lie on you when you maintain your spiritual integrity. People lie on you, watch this, as a defense mechanism. To avoid the emotional pain of rejection. Let me say that one more time. People will lie on you uh, as a defense mechanism. To avoid the rejection, the pain of rejection. Let me give you an example. uh, How it's a defense mechanism. Brothers, do you you know, or maybe it was you, have you ever tried to, and I'm going to use slang here, uh, holler at a female? Uh, and, And the female rejects you or your friend and you know what your friend said oh i ain't want her anyway now what is he doing he's lying because had he not wanted her he would never try to holler at her so he's lying as a defense mechanism you know he would say he would say oh i just wanted to see what she was gonna say no you wanted to get her and since she rejected you you're lying as a defense mechanism to avoid the pain of rejection I wish y'all knew I was preaching right about now. So people will lie on you as a defense mechanism to avoid the pain of rejection. Amen, somebody. People will lie on you when they witness your elevation. When they see you are getting promoted. When they see that God's favor is on your life. When they see that you are being blessed to get this and to get that. And wonderful things are happening to you in your life. They don't like that, so they will lie on you. When they witness your elevation, people will lie on you when your success eclipses their success. In other words, people will be your friend and love you when y'all on the same level. 
I'm already in the pulpit right about now. But when they see that God starts elevating you beyond their level of success, that's when the crab mentality comes in. You know, the crabs are all in the box, right? But all of a sudden, when one crab gets to the, come on in here, somebody, to the top, the rest of them want to pull them back. Come on in here. Pull them right back down because they will lie on you because folks are jealous of your success. And you can't watch this. You can't stop people from lying on you. You can't stop that. And this narrative proves that. So I want you to understand that Joseph, somebody shout Joseph. Joseph was placed in jail after being falsely accused but the bible says but the lord but the lord extended kindness to him and gave him favor in the sight of the chief jailer and i want you to know that that's important the text doesn't say after potiphar's wife lied on joseph that joseph went and cursed her out joseph did something evil to her joseph tried to kill her no, uh, none of that stuff takes place. The Bible doesn't say anything like that because Joseph didn't do anything like that. Let me pause for station identification and rewind so I can upload this to your spiritual hard drive. Just because somebody lies on you doesn't give you a free pass to go out and talk about them, slander them, and slander their character, and slander their name, and go back and lie back on them. Amen. Just know that when folk lie on you, the <laughs> Lord will be. Come on in here, church with you because the bible said that the lord extended kindness to joseph so in other words when people lie on you you don't have to have a hissy fit you don't have to throw down with him and go to jail and get a charge y'all better come get me this morning you just have to know that if you hadn't done nothing wrong that god can lift your life if you humble yourself in the sight of the lord the, the song that we sing is humble yourself in the sight of the lord and he will live Come on in here, somebody. You up. So don't worry about when you get lied on because the Bible says that the Lord extended kindness to Joseph and gave him favor. I have come to the place in my life at the tender age of 38 that I realized I would rather have God's favor than a lot of success. Because if you have God's favor, see, sometimes people will only be happy with God if everything is going all sweet in their life. I wish I had a witness in this here this morning. Some people will only give God praise if everything is going sweet. But when you have God's favor, even if it's not going sweet, you know that God can give you some kindness and give you some favor in your life to elevate you. Amen, somebody. So when you got God's favor, if things are going well, God going to be with me. If things are going bad, come on here, somebody. God is going to be with me. So if you got God's favor, you always have a position where you know God can bless you. Amen, somebody. So I want to help you understand that a major part of God's providence in Joseph's life was the fact that God uh, allowed him to be placed in jail with some specific individuals. I want you to hear this. God, a major part of God's providence over Joseph's life was who God allowed him to be in prison with. Don't forget that. Notice, please, uh, because God's favor, God gave him favor with the chief jailer. Because the chief jailer placed Joseph in charge of all of the prisoners. See, Joseph was in jail because he was falsely accused by Potiphar's wife and he was lied on. So God still extended kindness to Joseph, watch this, and gave Joseph favor. So God's favor says that when Joseph got into prison, the very people that he was placed in prison with, God was going to use to bless him. Ooh, I hope y'all getting this this morning. So you have to make sure you understand that that is key when understanding God's uh, providence over your life. God could use the people who are closest to you to elevate you. Because he was in jail, watch this, with the prisoners of the king. Joseph was placed in confinement in the jail with Pharaoh's prisoners. You need to know that because the text doesn't explain that to you. It just says that when he went to jail, he was in confinement with the king's prisoners. And I'm going to show you how powerful that is in just a moment because you got to be careful who you are around and what you do to the people who you are around. Amen, somebody. Now, here is a powerful point that's pregnant with pertinent paramount possibilities 
that will prayerfully prepare you to pinpoint precise plans to practice the principle in this passage. Amen, somebody. Now, all that means is you may want to pay attention to this. <laughs> the people who God places you around could be the very people that God plans to use to live your life to a higher level. The very people who God blesses you to be around could be the very people who God uses to live your life to a higher level. Now, now the only question is that I have for you on this morning is how do you treat the people who God places you around? Mm, Y'all okay? This is a moment of reflection right now. How do you treat the folk who God has placed in your life? Whether they be family members, uh, marital uh, uh, spouses, friends, co-workers, folk on your job, people who you meet in the community. How do you treat those people? Because the very people who God allows to come into your life could be the very people that God chooses to use to elevate your life. And how you treat them could be the difference of you getting elevated or not getting elevated. And I'm going to show you that uh, in, in just a moment here. So I want you to understand uh, this is paramount because we are living in a generation where morals and people having manners is now out the window. Let me, let me, let me, let me come home here, church. Follow me, Brother Walla. We are living in an age where... People are now being desensitized to uh, having normal conversations because we are so engulfed in social media. Come on in here, somebody. We, 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 we can block whoever we want as our friend on Facebook. We can ignore them. We can just pick up the phone and see who we want to talk to and don't want to talk to. Watch this. We are living at a time where people no longer have respect for adults elderly people and it's just not the younger people it's the younger people and the older people we have lost our manners you can send somebody an email and they never respond to you and when you see them they act like they didn't even get it you can send somebody a text message and they will never even confirm that they even received the text message and then when they see you they act like that you ain't never seen it because we live in the world where everything is electronic and we have lost the art of the conversation. It used to be when you saw an uh, older person or anybody, you spoke to them. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? You look them in your eye, you hug them, you give them a handshake. Now what people do now, they have their headphones and they walk right past like they don't see you. Yeah. I wish I had a witness in here. Yeah. And we are desensitized to the art of the conversation. And then we wonder why the people who are around us don't, we don't have no favor with them. You don't know that the people who God places you around could be the very same people that God is trying to use to bless you. And if you don't treat them with respect, they may not bless you. And your elevation could be on hold. Are y'all hearing me on this morning? Because I want you to understand that Joseph is in jail. He has been placed in confinement but he has been providentially placed around two people that's going to have an enormous impact on his life. And I'm going to show you that uh, in just a moment. So we got to make sure we go back to having manners. Amen, somebody. Treating people nice because you don't know whether or not you're entertaining angels unawares. Are y'all still in here with me on this morning? So the people who God places you around could be this very same people who can live your life to a higher level. I remember uh, my father in the ministry is John Marshall. But when I met him almost 10 years ago, when I met him, I had no clue that that was the person who God was going to use to get me into ministry. Are y'all hear me? So you just don't know who God is trying to place in your life to help you get to the next level in your life. When I met him, I shook his hand and the first thing he, that came out of his mouth was, you are going to be a great evangelist. And I wasn't even preaching then. I ain't even thought about preaching. My friends just said, oh, you're going to be a preacher. Uh, never wanted to be a preacher. Never wanted to be a preacher. Never wanted to be a preacher. But, but it, it was him who God used to show me my true gift and what God had put me here for. 
And once I got started teaching and preaching, I fell in love with it, and it's the best thing that ever happened to me, using my gifts to try to help somebody. But if you treat people the wrong way or ignore them, or don't speak to them, and don't respond to them favorably, you could be rejecting the very same person that God is trying to place in your, your life to elevate you. Are y'all hearing me? So who church, beloved, uh, in your life has God placed when you have had a messed up attitude? Who in your life uh, where you know you have had a spiritual famine? <laughs> yeah. Where your attitude has been really, really messed up, unspiritual. Who in your life have you been treating horribly? Amen, somebody. Who in your life that you have shunned? Who in your life who you have refused to be nice to? Who in your life you have refused to help? Amen, somebody. Who in your life have you not blessed? That could be the very person that God is trying to use to elevate your life. So here's what I want to tell you. Uh, on this morning the very person who God places in your life could be the person that God is trying to use to help you get to your divine destiny amen somebody amen. And, and and you know what I'm so happy he put Jesus in my life I said I'm so happy that God put Jesus in my life because the Lord said I will never leave you nor forsake you amen somebody I'm happy that God put Jesus in my life so here's what I want to tell you today God can elevate you beyond your current set of circumstances let me talk to somebody here i want to stay academic here god can bless you despite your current set of circumstances and i'm going to show you when there's two things that i'm going to show you that joseph did that influenced god to help joseph get his prison break amen somebody somebody shout prison break so let me show you how to get your prison break real quick because I want to show you how you can have your breakthrough on this morning. Number one, God, you may want to write these down if you're serious about getting your breakthrough. God can elevate me when I take care of the people around me. Amen. That's when God can elevate you, when you take care of the people around around you go to genesis chapter 40 and verse number four when joseph was put in prison church in the same place where the king's prisoners were pharaoh's prisoners were the chief cupbearer and the chief baker notice what happened in verse number four the captain of the bodyguard put joseph in charge of them now the them there uh is the cupbearer and the baker let's say it together the cupbearer and the baker one more time the cupbearer and the baker those are the two gentlemen who were placed in jail with joseph now notice what the lord what, what happened the captain of the bodyguard put joseph in charge of them and he did what took care of them and they were in confinement for some time notice what the new american standard says he did what church took care of them let's say that together he took care of them God can elevate you when you take care of the people who are around you. Let me tell you something about Joseph's church. Somebody shout Joseph. Joseph, Joseph was faithful. Yes. Now let me tell you what faithful really is. Being faithful is when you fulfill your assigned responsibilities. If God gives you some responsibilities and if you are willing to fulfill them, then you are faithful. But if you are given some assigned responsibilities and you don't do it, you are not faithful. Let me tell you why. Because when Joseph was working, when Joseph was in jail, nobody had to watch over his work. They left Joseph alone because everything that he touched, God allowed to prosper. Amen, somebody. So I want to help you understand that you have true spiritual integrity where you do your job and you do your job well and you do the job that God gave you to do well. Amen, somebody. So he was faithful. Now watch this. While Joseph was in jail, he cared for, attended to, showed compassion and concern. Watch this. For those who are in the same predicament. Now here's what the devil has tricked us to believe. The devil wants us to think just because I'm in a situation, I can't help nobody else. Well, let me get my life fixed first. 
y'all ain't said nothing. And when I get my life right, when I fix my life, then I think I'll try to help you. But right now, I can't do it, baby. You ever heard anybody talk like that? Have you ever said anything like that? You don't have to say amen, but I'm just telling you, you know, this could be your reality. See, we think because we are in a messed up situation, we can't do nothing for nobody else until we get out of that. But what you fail to realize is when you are in that messed up situation, if you end up caring for somebody else, that's how God can elevate you. Because let me tell you what Joseph did, church. Let me tell you what Joseph, this is so interesting to me. Because uh, what we do is we say, let me get myself right, then I can help you. Notice what Joseph did in jail. Notice Genesis chapter 40. And let's look at verse uh, number five. Then the cupbearer and the baker for the king of Egypt who were in confinement, in, in confined in jail, both had a dream way before Martin Luther King. The same night, amen, each man with his own dream and each dream with his own interpretation. All right, so the chief cupbearer and the chief baker both had what? Both had a what? They both had a dream when? The same night. Each man with his own dream and each dream with his own interpretation. Each man with his own dream and each dream with his own interpretation. Notice verse 6. When Joseph came to them in the morning, first thing he did, Joseph came to people while he was in jail and observed them. Behold, they were dejected. He asked Pharaoh's officials who were in uh, with him in confinement in his master's house, why are your faces so sad? They said to him, we have, uh, we have had a dream and there was no one to interpret it. Then Joseph said to them, do not interpretations belong to God. Tell it to me, please. Let me tell you what Joseph did quickly here, church. Joseph came to them. Do you still come to people when you are in a messed up situation? Do you still approach other people who are in a messed up situation like you? If you are in a messed up situation, do you still have the spiritual integrity to go up to other people? Or do you just say, I don't, I don't want to be around nobody. I, I, just, I just don't want to help nobody. I just don't want to be around nobody because I'm in a messed up situation. The Bible says early in the morning, Joseph did what? He came to them. Then the Bible says that Joseph did what? He observed them. Then Joseph noticed their facial expressions. Amen, somebody. And then when he noticed their facial expressions, Joseph asked them a question, which means he engaged them in a conversation. You know, we do sometimes, we will see somebody at church who is normally jovial, who's normally always happy, normally always smiling. And then we see that they got a sad look on their face and we walk past them because we got to get home. Mm, that hurt church. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to keep it real up in here this morning. Am I right about it? You see somebody's facial expression at church that is not right. And you know what we do? We say, man, I got to go. I know they don't look right. This, this brother over here don't look right. His sister don't look right. Something going on, but I got to go. You just don't understand that Joseph engaged people who had sad faces in conversation. He came to them. He observed them. He saw their faces, faces were sad and he asked them a question. Why are your faces so sad? You need to ask sister such and such. Why is your face so sad? Why is your countenance falling? Why do you not look the way you normally look? What's going on in your life? Watch this. How can I help you? Now watch this church. Here it is. Joseph did this while he was in jail. Okay, he was concerned about other people while he was locked up too. So while you are in a messed up predicament or a negative circumstance or a negative situation, are you still concerned about other people? See, God can elevate you when you take care of other people who are in your same predicament. Amen, somebody. Amen. Let me tell you what Joseph was. Joseph was hospitable. See, what we do is when we go to work in the morning and somebody cut their eye at us or say something rude or something inappropriate to us, we treat them the same way they treat us. See, you can't let nobody else's behavior dictate your behavior. I just said something right there. That was $200 right there. Uh, somebody would have paid me $200 just to say that at their at church. Amen, somebody. Let me help you understand something. You cannot allow other people to dictate your attitude. If they want to have a bad attitude, if they want to be mean-spirited, if they want to have a harsh attitude toward you, you can't allow what they do to affect your personality. Because I am going to maintain my spiritual integrity regardless of how you try to come at me. And sometimes we block our own blessing because we go right back off on them. But you know what? If you go back off those same people who God places you around, when your car is down and you need somebody to come pick you up, you know, when they ride past you, what are they going to do? I'm going to write about it. 
they gonna say yeah see that look look at them now <laughs> they, they treated me see that's what you get for having a bad attitude and they'll skirt on by you but it had you had you had you had you treated them with kindness and compassion and cared for people and noticed how you could help them jo joseph said do not all dreams belong to god so he took care of those people and can i tell you that one of those same people who joseph faced in prison was was a was a person who god was going to use to elevate joseph mm. so joseph was in prison but he took care and helped folk in prison now watch this you may not say amen but it's the truth here's the principle if you are sick you can still help out other sick people if you have been depressed you can help out somebody else who's suffering from depression if you have been homeless you can care for those who are homeless if you have been abused or raped you can help out somebody else who is going through that so that god could potentially use that person to elevate you you don't know if you help out other people that god could bless those people to help you that's why we have to care for people we can't always look at the negativity of where we are because we know that if the lord is with us and we have god's favor over our lives even though the circumstances may look negative god can providentially provide for me even in the midst of a negative situation if god is with we at the grace so church of christ want to thank you for listening if the Passion for Christ television broadcast has blessed your life this morning and you would like to donate, you can go online to www.graceviewcoc.com, click on the donate tab, and you can make your tax deductible donation to this broadcast. God bless you and tune in next week. Showed up here to me. So when your troubles come, just hold it up and change it. You might have brought some trials. You might have brought some tribulations here this morning. You might be a little weary, but I came to tell you.